e-portfolios are valuable tools that support students as they move through their academic journey. They may serve as a document and multimedia file repository, and more importantly, they may serve as a place for students to reflect on their curricular and co-curricular activities. Students can share content with faculty, teachers, award granting agencies, or future employers. They can document their history of personal growth, and they can be assessed on their academic achievements. They have personal control of their learning history, the connections they've built, and their future learning goals. And they can create organic objects that can grow with their life experiences and can be expanded to reflect their professional development. Through the Office of Instructional and Research Technology at Rutgers, the university is currently implementing the Sakai ePortfolio for use in several areas of the university, including the Graduate Schools of Education and Pharmacy, the Douglas Residential College, the Aresti Undergraduate Research Program, and the First Year Interest Group Seminars Program. Interest has also been expressed by the SAS Honors and Transfer Student Programs, the Burns Seminars, and the Office of Career Services for use starting in fall of 2010. All of the units I've mentioned are using ePortfolios in different ways and for different purposes, but they all share the underlying goal of enhancing student engagement and the student learning experience while at Rutgers and throughout their lives. Students can continue adding to their portfolios long after they leave Rutgers, continuing the ties to their alma mater throughout their lives. Before we go any further, I'd like to introduce you to a little bit of the terminology that we use when we talk about ePortfolios. We refer to the website that the students create using data from their ePortfolios as their web portfolio, and the forms and matrices into which they put the data, the working portfolio. Now let me start by showing you some in-progress web portfolios, after which I'll provide some detail about how they are both developed and implemented. What we're looking at right here is Rohan Thacker's ePortfolio. Rohan is a third-year student majoring in communication, and the portfolio was developed as part of the Rutgers ePortfolio program. What we're looking at right here is the introduction page to his web portfolio. As you see, he elected to have comments so that any viewers that came to his web portfolio could leave a brief comment. Rohan selected the Old Queen's red and black design template from a constantly updated library created right here at Rutgers. Categories being used were selected by the Academic Engagement and Programming Department as part of the portfolio development process. Each category represents a unit specified type of web page. As we've seen, this one is the introduction. This category goes into a little bit about him. The accomplishments are specified as part of the Rutgers ePortfolio program. The leadership category depicts some of Rohan's accomplishments as far as leadership. And the resume allows Rohan to both upload a completed resume document as well as fill out the resume parts in the ePortfolio. This is Brittany Perry's ePortfolio. Brittany is a second year student majoring in mathematics. The portfolio was developed as part of the Douglas Residential College requirements. As you see here, the first page is a home page, followed by an About Me page, which goes into a little bit more about her. And something that's specific to Douglas Residential College is the Pathway, which integrates academic courses, research, and living learning initiatives. Students have the choice of whether they share their web portfolio with the world, with their classmates, or with their hiring managers, their professors, and their friends and family. The student can also determine whether viewers can make comments on their portfolio, as we've seen in the Rohans. As you can see, students can create very personalized web portfolios, showcasing not only their work, but also their personalities. Developing the portfolio involves both technical steps and pedagogical thought. We begin by sitting down with departments or units to find out what exactly they are trying to accomplish with their portfolios. Are they looking at student learning? Are they looking at student experiences? Or are they looking to use the portfolio as an assessment mechanism? Once we understand those things, we can sit down and do a detailed requirements gathering for their new portfolio. If they like the existing Rutgers portfolio and wish to only add a new matrix to it, that can also be done. After the requirements gathering, we come back and develop the working portfolio. We go back and forth with the department to ensure that all of the instructions are clear 
and appropriate for the views that the students are going to have. The instructions are created by the unit so that they can meet the specific unit's needs. After we've developed the working portfolio, we ask the unit to review that before we begin to develop the presentation portfolio or web portfolio. After that's done, we look for a small pilot group of students to do some testing, and then we put the full portfolio into production or into pilot production. So what's exactly in a portfolio? Well, portfolios contain forms which allow students to type in information at the request of the unit. Those forms are then stored in the user's Sakai resources area. There are structures that are built to lead the students through the development process. The structures are matrices and wizards, and we've shown those to you earlier in this presentation. We look at workflow, the electronic interaction between the faculty member and the student, whether there are review mechanisms involved, whether there's assessment against a rubric, or whether the project is being done on its own, we need to understand the workflow. And then we look at the output, which is usually a web presentation. Now let's talk a little bit about using the ePortfolio. In the Rutgers ePortfolio, students will begin by entering a wizard or matrix and then following the steps to add or upload materials. Wizards or matrices are really the heart of the portfolio system. They provide a structured workflow for students to follow in meeting their academic requirements as given by their department or program. The difference between them is really presentational. A matrix gives a student a snapshot view of the requirements and learning goals, whereas a wizard takes a more step-by-step -step approach. Most of the instructions that they see are decided upon by faculty and their department. Typically, what students will do is click a link and they'll be presented with a basic text box accompanied with a file browser. In the text box, they will enter information pertinent to this particular wizard or matrix and also upload a photo or some sort of evidence of achievement regarding this topic. Once they've saved that form, it will be present in this list here. In some cases, the student will need to submit it for review. In those cases, they'll see next to the edit link a submit for review link, which will send this particular form off to a faculty member. This chain of events will continue throughout the student's process here in the ePortfolio, and they will follow each wizard or matrix until they get to the point where they want to publish their portfolio. They can do that by selecting the Rutgers ePortfolio template which will then provide them with a few choices on how they want their portfolio to look. Once they've selected that, they can then begin to select the form content that we've previously looked at. And that will be easily done by selecting it in the left column and moving it over to the right column. All the while, the student will be able to preview it and see what their completed web portfolio may look like. There are many times during working portfolio creation during which faculty can work closely with students to help them building their web portfolio. Faculty will be able to provide feedback on materials created or uploaded by students and can assess them based upon discipline-specific rubrics created for just this process. I mentioned earlier that there are two ways to move forward, creating an original portfolio from scratch or creating a school or departmental-based matrix to use with the existing Rutgers portfolio. Let's talk about the second option at this time. Departments that are generally happy with the Rutgers portfolio have the option of creating a matrix to be used in conjunction with this portfolio. Advantages of doing this are reduced development time and ease of use for students involved in work that could span multiple e-portfolios, such as a Douglas Residential College student participating in a first-year interest group seminar and majoring in journalism. The timeline for portfolio development is based on its complexity and how closely it mimics existing work that we have done. We've created portfolios that have taken three months and others that have taken three years. Determining how long any given portfolio will take is discussed at the first requirements gathering meeting. If the timeline exceeds the one that you're thinking about, we may be able to suggest other ways of developing the portfolio that will take a shorter amount of time. OIRT does not charge units for development maintenance or data storage at this time. Funds for portfolio projects are allocated from student computing fees. Should this situation change in the future, we'll be certain to let you know. So that's it. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email ePortfolio at Rutgers.edu. 
or you can call 732-445-6671.